Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Paul here and today I have got a, a really cool tutorial for you. We are going to create uh, this scene that you're seeing here entirely in Blender. Now, I've recreated this from um, a panel uh, that I had created inside of Clip Studio Pro. I'm basically going to try to use the same type of methodology in terms of breakdown uh, to do this inside of Blender, but we're going to utilize a number of things. We're going to utilize uh, some objects and some tune shading. We're going to look at freestyle. We are going to create things in Grease Pencil and uh, even create some word balloons. And finally, we're going to use the compositor and stitch it all together for a final uh, composite that will serve as a entire panel. Now, I'll show you the working scene, uh, what we're ultimately going to produce. And if I was to break this down, you can see that this has got uh, this background plate with a nice gradient on it. Uh, this is a grease pencil object that I've produced some clouds on, and then it's uh, basically a plane uh, that's been subdivided and morphed to create these buildings. Then I've got this imported set, the same set that was used in Clip Studio Pro. Uh, and this has just got some basic diffused shaders and one uh, decal on it. And then another grease pencil object inside of that. Uh, and finally, uh, these two curves with some text files for the speech balloons. Uh, and then of course, everything is broken down in the compositor. So I've opened up a default uh, Blender, a new brand new Blender file, and we're just going to do a little bit of setup to make sure that we've got everything that we need to do to get a really good render. We've obviously got a camera here, we've got a cube, and we have a lamp. I'm going to change this lamp to a sun lamp directional. I'm going to rotate it uh, so that it's pointing at our scene. I'm going to change the rotation on this camera and bring this down uh, somewhere around here. And I'm going to delete this default cube. Uh, so uh, let's just bring that camera over into the center. Let's just go selection to grid. That should be good. So that when we look through our camera, we've got um, a fairly uh, plain view. We want to be working in cycles, obviously, and we can actually bring the render settings in sampling really, really low. I would recommend something a render about 16, so you're not spending too much time on renders. Keep in mind, we don't have to render photorealism here. All we need is really color passes, shadow passes, and uh, the grease pencil, which renders really quickly just as a straight image pass. Okay, so a couple more things um, while we're in our render settings. Let's scroll down to light paths and we'll leave the total at 12, but we don't need any transmission. Maybe we'll bump up the diffuse because we're working with that. Clamping, uh, we can zero that out and caustics, we can switch that off. This is something that I do before anything else because in cycles, it just brings my render settings uh, down to something that's really manageable and will get us really fast renders because we don't need all of that information to be calculated. Uh, all right, so what next? Well, we do want to enable freestyle, but we also need to enable transparency under film. We can leave everything else as a default for now. So let's go ahead and create our sky. So what I'm going to do is in front view, I'm going to go shift A, create a plane. And here under add plane, I'm going to align this to the view. So it's facing us. I'm going to go into edit mode, and I'm gonna just sort of uh, scale that out nice and large like that. Let's bring that up to maybe the horizon line. Let's take a look through the camera to make sure that it's filling up the background, but we don't really want it at the zero point. We want it quite far in the background. Let's just go to wireframe so we know that. So maybe you know, just a few units back and then in camera mode, we wanna make sure that it is uh, sort of filling the viewport. So we just sort of scale it and gr grab it until it's sort of filled that area, but we've got this nice plane in the background. And what we need to do is create a texture for this. So why don't we open up our shading window down here and let's give this a material. We'll click on new and we'll call this sky. Okay, now creating a sky material, I like to generally create some sort of a gradient Okay, and so what I'm going to do is 
going to uh, replace the principal shader with, um, let's say, something like an emission. Okay, so shift. If you've got your node wrangler enabled, you just have to go shift S with the principal shader selected, go to shader and change that to an emission shader. And let's take a look through the uh, camera by hitting zero in our viewport uh, and change this to look development mode so that we can see what's happening as we go. Now we want a gradient, shift A, add a gradient texture which we need the factor of. And you can see that automatically the gradient goes basically left to right, right? Which we need to fix. Uh, and we do that by going shift A input. We're going to UV map this. Uh, and so we're going to select that plane. We're going to go into edit mode and hit U to unwrap. All right. And if you want to see what that UV map actually looks like, Let's just make a second window over here and let's create a uh, UV editor so that when we look at this, we can see that if we rotate this around and position it and even scale it, you can notice that when we scale that way, we're actually getting that kind of uh, UV mapping there uh, so that we can uh, better Put this, but you know there is a diff there is a little, uh, a slightly better way of creating that gradient, and that is using um, a mapping node. Okay, we can just set that to texture, and by scaling this, right, and positioning it, you can actually control where that sits on your UV map. So we just use that UV map to, to make sure that it's rotated correctly um, and that it's mapped on correctly, but then we can further um, change that mapping using this mapping node. Now, we don't want a black and white node. We want something that is colored. So let's just go ahead and put a color node between the gradient texture here and the emission texture. Shift A, color mix RGB. And we want that factor to be the factor of this color. And what that means is that if we select one color, let's make this a blue, and then we select another color, let's make this a yellow, all right? We can actually see that as we scale this, you can see where that color sits. Uh, and so uh, we can move this location a little bit like that. Uh, we can scale this out so it's a bit more of a gentler gradient. And using this node setup, we do have a, a lot of control uh, over this sky texture. And what I like to do is sort of have this uh, fairly light, um, warm color on the bottom and then a nice cool color on the top uh, for my skies. Okay. Um, and now what we've got is basically a sky. So what else do we need? Well, we need some clouds. And I like to produce clouds using uh, the grease pencil. We'll need to create this in front of this object here. So let's go ahead first and create that grease pencil object. Now, guys, if you're going to use the grease pencil, if you're going to do any drawing at all, whether in Clip Studio or Blender, Get yourself a tablet or a Wacom of some kind, okay? Don't try to do this with the mouse. So, grease pencil objects. I'm gonna go Shift A and create a blank grease pencil object. Now, it creates something at the center here uh, and we need to go to the object data and we need to add a few things so that we can see what we're editing. Now, the first thing that I like to do is go to my object data and under viewport display, I like to enable the axes. Now, under the grease pencil object, obviously we need to call this something. So I'm gonna call this clouds and I'm going to create a new layer. Now, under my viewport options display, uh, on my uh, viewport, there, there is a canvas setting that you'll notice that if you're in any other view, that canvas does look at your viewport. And that's not exactly what we want. I like to use the, 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 the canvas setting, 
but I like to set that canvas setting uh, and lock that to my ZX plane because I'm in front view. So I'm gonna go quickly into draw mode and set that view to front. And this locks that canvas setting to the front view. So we know that that grid is where we're going to be drawing. Okay, now our canvas settings are within the grease pencil object. If you scroll down um, under the grease pencil object until we get to viewport display, canvas. And what we wanna do is um, either in front view or whatever, what I like to do is to make this nice and large and I like to offset it so that the bottom of that canvas is right there at the control node. And finally, what we need to do is create a material. Because I went with a blank one, it automatically assigns a material for you. It's called material one, um, and it is a black stroke material. But what we wanna do is create a white fill material. And I'll show you how this is done. So let's click on where it says material, and let's call this white fill. Let's disable stroke under surface and enable fill and click on the color swatch and bring that all the way up to white. And so now we've created a material inside of Grease Pencil for this particular object. Now by default, you've got this menu up here that sort of has draw on it and all those other things, but where are your brush settings? I don't know why by default it's switched off, but if you have to, if you have to get that, you go view tool settings, and that brings up your toolbar. Now it may flip to the bottom, in which case if you have that flipped on the bottom, all you gotta do is right click on that menu bar and flip it to the top so that you've got everything in its setting. And there you can see that you've got your default um, brushes, um, which are fine for right now. We have got a, our material window, which will have a drop down of those materials. So if you don't want to get too confused and keep switching between areas, you can go grease pencil object over here and then switch between materials um, that will be populated in this list. We've got radius of the actual stroke, not the fill. Uh, the strength at which it's applied, which we can uh, disable the pressure sensitivity for now. We've got a few other set settings such as the brush um, options to, uh, you know, you can have input samples or post-processing like smoothing, those sorts of things. Your pressure sensitivity curves, the icon display, all of those are in this tool settings menu at the top and it's telling you what layer you're working on. So I'm gonna give this layer a name by double clicking and going clouds, okay? And so that layer is visible here as well. So I'm gonna switch on that strength because I need some pressure sensitivity and I'm going to select the draw marker tool. And what that does is it won't uh, even out our strokes. I'm gonna make sure that our post-processing is switched off as well as everything else because I want some really nice sketchy clouds. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this line down here and then I'm gonna draw some fluffy white clouds. So we've got some nice cloud shapes and if we go to edit and we select any of these, you can see the points that make that up. And so if you've created something that maybe you want to edit some of those points, you can um, certainly, in edit mode, uh, we can switch on proportional editing. So if there are some points that just don't uh, seem to make too much sense or you need to massage into place, uh, you can do that in your edit settings. But um, overall, I'm quite happy with those four types of clouds. And so I'm going to continue to be in edit mode. I'm just gonna click on one of these Let's scale this down and move this over here and maybe hit L for that, scale this one down, scale this one in the X direction, move this over here, link, scale this one down. Um, now the last thing we obviously need is some buildings, okay? And I'm just gonna make some very simple ones. I'm just gonna create a plane that's set to align to view, which is great. And again, we can move this back, but it has to be in front of the clouds, which need to be close to the sky. And I'm going to scale it in the X. And I'm gonna divide this maybe 30 times. 
and uh, build ourselves a city. And there we've got a nice random skyline, which we can also give a material. We can call this city. And I'm just gonna change this one to a diffuse material and we'll just give it a nice kind of a grayish color, um, maybe a little bit darker there. Um, and there you have it guys, we've got a nice skyline which is going to serve as a really nice background. And now uh, we can, what we're gonna do is call this collection background, obviously. Um, and now we can move on to the next part. Now I'm gonna import this uh, object for the next bit. So I'm just gonna to go to append uh, and append this train model, which is going to serve as our foreground. And so by selecting uh, objects in the train model, now we can sort of maybe move that where we need it. So we need it a little bit further back, maybe, and a little bit over to just get our uh, composition just right. And so the last thing we need to do, obviously, uh, before we do speech balloon, sorry, second last thing, is to create our grease pencil. And so let's go ahead and go Shift A and add a new grease pencil object immediately because we've got those canvas settings there. We want to go to our grease pencil object and change those that offset in the Y direction. Let's have a look here. Okay, maybe we can scale that up a little bit. So we've got that. Now, if you have a hard time seeing this grid, you can either go into solid mode or wireframe mode, whatever works best. And in uh, 3D view, I'm gonna move this closer to the seat so that we know where those characters are gonna be. And we can know that we're gonna sort of draw in this general area. Now, one thing that you might wanna try, okay, we can obviously disable the background first off. And then this train model, um, if you need a reference for this, uh, what I suggest we could do is go into what's known as workbench mode briefly. And one of the settings in workbench mode is X-ray. Uh, what we can do is can bring down that X-ray uh, so it sort of becomes a bit transparent. Uh, and this is a really good way of drawing over objects so that if uh, you'll see that if I go draw, we can sort of see over that. It's transparent because the X-ray also works on the grease pencil that we're drawing, but this gives us the option to quickly draw uh, those characters that we need, uh, at least rough them out before we can just disable that train model. And so I'm gonna go ahead and create a material called uh, non-repo blue to rough out the characters that I want to draw. So again, this material, I'm gonna call this non-repo blue. And uh, under its settings, under stroke, I'm going to bump that right up and I'm gonna make this a nice blue line. Can I see this well enough? Maybe it has to be a little bit brighter. So long as I can see what I'm drawing, that's the important part. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna create a custom brush here based on the draw pencil so that it always pins this non-repo blue to this. And the way I'm gonna do this is in brush, I'm gonna click on this two, and you can see that it now it does this draw pencil 001. And I'm gonna call this non-repo blue. And finally, I'm going to pin that material to this. I'm gonna bump the strength up to 100% so it's really um, easy to see. Uh, the radius is fine, but if you go down here, now you'll see that you've got a draw pencil and you've got a non-repo blue pencil. Uh, that brush, if you've got that little shield ticked, it will save this data block even if it has no uses. So if you delete all the layers with it, uh, that brush will remain in this file and you can import it into future projects or other files as you go. All right, so let's quickly sketch out these characters before we get any further along. All 
Okay, now that I've got my rough lines, what I can actually do is go back to setting this uh, to cycles again. And now I can uh, disable my train model so I can draw directly onto my um, line work here. And what I can do is create scene world. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up my world to something like a, a white so I can actually see what I'm drawing. And I will call this characters. Let's just disable the camera and everything. Now, the reason I did this is because in X-Ray, it X-rays all of the line work. And what I need to do now is drop down the opacity of this um, layer that I've called draft. You can see that I can drop down the opacity. Let's go into draw mode here. Okay. And I can add another layer. And still with my blue line, I'm going to call this blue line. Draft is dropped down. I can lock that so no further edits will be done to that. But because I've got the basic position, I can now uh, begin to draw a little bit more clearly. I, li I like to do a rough and then I like to do a more refined one before I do my inks. So now let's go ahead and do that. Now at any time, I want to flip to see if my drawing is well balanced or whatever. Because we're in front view here, we go control one and it shows us the backside of our drawing. And this makes it a lot easier to do things like going into edit mode, let's say, and uh, bound select a bunch of stuff and that sort of stuff. We can now scale. Oop. <laughs> Uh, we can just go connected only. Or grab that down like that. Okay, and the balance isn't too bad on this, so I'm quite happy with how it is. So I'm just going to go back to front view there. And what this means is then I can add on my ink layer, which uh, should be fairly easy to do. And then we can get onto fills. And then I'm just going to take you through that process. So let's just flash ahead to where I have an ink layer. And so here we've got some inks, which are a final on the blue lines. Okay, I've just relabeled them blue line one and two, uh, which we can now disable. And we can see that the inks are looking quite nice. Um, I'm liking the line work. What I used as a pen for this, I just used the normal um, draw ink, which has a really nice uh, type of ink line with a lot of weight on it, just as a default. I created a material called Inks Black, which is basically a black version of the blue line, and now I've got my inks. Now, creating the fills um, is a little, uh, it takes a little work because the way that objects are created in Grease Pencil, it's almost as if you're creating a separate object every time you draw a line or uh, create a fill. But first, what we want to do is just block out the color, and that's, that process is fairly simple. Inside of our Grease Pencil object, which I'm going to relabel as Characters. So over Blue Line 2, I'm going to add another layer, and I'm going to call this uh, Fills. Okay, I'm going to lock off the layers that we don't want to edit, just in case. So uh, in our Material Settings here, uh, we're going to need to create, obviously, a new color, but I'm going to base it on our white fill because it, it has to be a fill material. So I'm going to select that and go add. Let's select white fill and let's click the number. And we'll call this, let's uh, we'll call this skin tone first. Okay. And under the color, we're going to create a nice sort of a weird band-aid-y looking pale skin tone. And now I'm going to select my uh, draw marker should be fine. And so if I do something like that, well, that's pretty fluoro, but no matter because with that selected, I can actually change it until I get, I can look at the swatch on the screen to get the type of color that I'm wanting, which is sort of like a, a pink ish type thing like that. If you want to jump onto color lovers or something like that and get an hexadecimal for yourself, uh, that's also something. Let's, let's give it a bit of a tan. That's quite nice. Okay, good. 
and now we can begin to fill. And the way we do this is to make sure that we're in our fill layer and we trace around and we can now block out a color. Now the way this works is if I draw into, uh, you know, fill in an area, if I go to edit mode, you'll see that this is actually a shape and that changes the shape there. Now, if you're a real stickler, what we could do is link, delete those points. We could massage those points until they uh, fill in the area correctly. And then we won't really have too much of a problem with overlap. Now, that's one way uh, that I like to, uh, to work. And as you go, all you have to do is continue to just go add. So let's say we had to add a um, another color. Let's call this green, uh, dark green. There we go. And still in our fill layer, shift middle mouse to just move that screen around. Go draw and we trace around that object. Now by default, whatever you draw over uh, tends to show over and so that in that edit mode there, right, that will show um, over that previously drawn area. And that's one way of doing it. I mean, you know, if, if you're lazy and you just wanna, you know, quickly get something out, okay, you can sort of like say, okay, I'm gonna block that and I'm gonna block this and I'm gonna block that. Now, if it's at 100% opacity, that's fine. But here's what happens when you drop the opacity, right? you can actually see the overlap. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, fill this out. And so there are the completed block colors. They're looking quite good. And so now obviously all we need now is some highlights, shading, that sort of stuff. Now there's two ways of doing this. The first way is the one that I like to use uh, normally in Clip, Clip Studio. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is uh, just create another layer. I'm gonna call this shading. And I'm gonna set this blend mode to overlay. Using uh, just black fill and white fill, what I can do is draw in areas of dark and light. All right, so let's say we wanted to just highlight those eyes there, for instance, put in a little circle there. And if I am very careful, I can drop that opacity down and really control the amount of shading. And that works quite well, okay? So with white fill, we can do things like add in a bit like that. But as soon as we begin to overlap, you see that that's where the problems arise, okay? So the other way I like to color is to stick to your regular blend mode at 100% opacity. But what you do is you create a light and shade based on the colors that you have. I'm gonna take, say, this skin tone, for instance. Go with skin, hit the number and call this skin dark. And then just drop the uh, shadow on that, maybe push that a little bit into the, the, the pink tones. And now what I can do in this shading is draw just this color. Okay. This means I can draw like that if I wanted to like, and if, if I'm not happy with it at any point, all I can do, all I have to do is in my material setting, just uh, go in and adjust it and it will dynamically adjust to the color because I haven't changed it or added another color to it. And the same thing goes for things like highlights, Let's say a new green color. Okay, so I'm just gonna go uh, add dark green and I'm gonna call this light green. And then we just adjust this coloring, maybe make that a little bit in the yellows. And now I can do things like put in that little spot highlight, draw a little shape over here and a shape over here. And now I've got a nice highlighted region, which looks really nice. So finally, we just have to produce some text balloons, which is simple enough. 
Uh, let's just work with uh, that center point there and let's just go Shift A and create a Bezier circle that's aligned to our view. We make sure that it's set to 2D shape and fill mode can be maybe set to front or both if you're really um, unsure. And now all we have to do is position it uh, above this character over here's head, uh, massage some of those points, and we're going to have to create a tail. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's move this over this way. Select these two points, subdivide. And now this one, we can change to a vector. So we can pull out a tail here, but these ones can, these two dots here, we change to vector handles as well. So we pinch those in together and we use the those ones that are aligned to do that. And now we can grab those points and these points. And we've got a nice tail there. That's, that's one speech balloon, which is quite nice. Then we can just duplicate that, scale it in the X direction, shrink it down, and we can get our second speech balloon for this character. So position wise, that has to be in front of everything. And I think we're, we're good there. I'm just gonna join these together because we just want one object, uh, really. Okay. And uh, I'm just gonna cursor to select it over here because now obviously we need our text. So let's go Shift A, text object. And again, we want to align that to the view. I'm just gonna go out of edit, um, make sure we're not in edit mode and I'm gonna make sure that that's the black uh, uh, material that I've created for that. Now, the way you load fonts is very, very simple. With your text uh, object selected, go down to where it says font, and under uh, regular, you click that folder and you navigate to where you store your font. So if you're on a Mac or a PC, they're gonna be in different places. Now, the one that I'm using is called Back Issues, so I'm going to select that one and you automatically see that that changes. But I'm also going to give this an italic and a, sorry, a, a bold and a bold italic uh, version as well. So I've got, no, sorry, let's change that. Italic as well as a bold italic option because that's what, this actually gives us. Okay, I'm gonna shrink this down to about there, and I'm gonna make sure that it is slightly above the word balloon object, and go into edit mode by hitting tab, and now I can begin to type, hey, and that's in regular, and now I'm gonna click bold and italic so that the next word I type will be in bold and italic. And then I just go enter. I untick those. What's in the bold italic next? Untick car. Do you think dot dot dot. Now this is center, uh, justified left. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to center justify by just going down to paragraph there. And then I can just grab that. I can scale it even further to fit into that balloon. And then I can even duplicate that so that I can edit this text for the second text object. Now what I can do to do a little bit of a cheat here is to keep that font there and just go, nope. And there I've got my second word balloon. And now the next part is all to do with compositing, all right? Because if we go and do a straight render now, and so our render isn't too bad, but you can already see that there are things that you have to split up. You can see the graininess in the shadows, right? So we need to split off a shadow pass. You can see that there's no outlines in the bits that we want outlined. You can see that the color is being combined with the shading, but our grease pencil stuff is looking fantastic. 
And so now we have to figure out a way to split this up using the compositor. So let's jump out of there and begin to split this up into groups and layers that make a little bit more sense. Now this camera might need to be pushed in so that we don't see the edges of that, uh, that set. And so what I've done here is I've got a background collection, train model collection, grease pencils collection, and now I'm gonna make one more collection. This is going to be called uh, text. Okay, we're gonna put our Bezier circle in there. That's speech balloon. We're gonna put our text files in there as well. Um, and so now what we can do is we can switch any of these on or off at the time of our choosing. Now one other thing we need of course is a freestyle pass. So why don't we start to do that? I'm going to go ahead and create a new view layer and I'm going to call this background. Under background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on train model and under view layer, disable from view layer. And you can see how that's now been deleted. Also, we don't want the grease pencils, so we do that and we don't want the text. Now all we've got is these objects here. So if we did a render of this, this is what we get. And if we were to add a filter like blur and blur in the X direction, we can now create a nice motion blur for our background. So then I've got this render layer called set. So let's go ahead and take a look at set. Back to our 3D viewport. And uh, I've created this as the set. And so this is the main part of the set. What we want is the text balloons, but not the text because the set is what is also going to be rendered for freestyle. So we don't want the background. We can create uh, disable from view there. And we don't want the grease pencils disable from view, and we don't want the text, but instead of disabling that, what I'm gonna do is under text, I'm just gonna grab those and put them in the grease pencils layer, okay? So they don't show up. All of this stuff now can get a freestyle pass. But before we do that, let's go ahead and select the passes that we want to render out. We've done this before. We want just the surfaces, no freestyle, no environment. We want a diffuse color pass because all the colors are diffuse. Let's just make sure of that. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, so that one's gotta be a diffuse color. So let's make that just the white diffuse. Yep, yeah, that works. Okay, sorry, just had to make sure about that. Okay, so we've got a diffuse pass. We want shadows. And we want emission because this restroom sign has got an emission material on it. And so if we go ahead and render that, we can now split off things like the diffuse color shader, the emission shader, and the shadow pass. Now you can see that these word balloons are casting shadows and we don't want that to happen. So how do we fix that? Well, we can do one of two things. We can give it a material that doesn't cast a shadow at all, or we can go into object settings and under ray visibility, we disable shadow so that when we do a re-render on that, you can see that that shadow now has been removed. So then we can obviously combine uh, these passes. And so we can go ahead and add in a color mix and have our diffuse and shadow with a multiply, right? And we can drop down that multiply. So we've got shading there, all right? We can duplicate that and put that to add and add in our emission layer so that our emission shows up. And if we wanted to bring our sky in, I would duplicate that again, put on the diffuse color over here, bring our sky in the, uh, the first part, set this to mix, but use the alpha 
as the factor. And so this is starting to look really, really good. And of course, what we need now is a freestyle line pass. And just to save a little bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and append the line style from a previous uh, version of this. And now what we can do is create a freestyle line set. And in this, we don't want to have any grease pencil, so we're going to disable that. We don't want any background layers, so we can disable that. And so in this layer, all we want enabled is freestyle. So if I go ahead and duplicate this, set that to freestyle so we can see what we're going to render. Let's take a look at some of our freestyle settings here. Got line set. There it is. Freestyle line style. It's all my defaults over here. We'll do a quick render of this. And there's our freestyle. And you can see that it's also freestyled around the speech balloons, which is really, really cool. And so all we want to do then is do a uh, multiply over the existing tree, add in the freestyle. And now we've got something that is starting to look like a comic. And now we've all we've got to do is bring in that grease pencil layer. So we're going to make one more view layer and call this grease pencil. And in this one, we want to disable the view layer of text, background, and train model. So all we've got is grease pencil. Let's duplicate this and let's bring in, let's make that layer grease pencil. Now I'm going to use something called an alpha over node over here because we want the alpha of this to show up over everything else. I'll do a quick render. And there's our final composition. Now, why did I put the lettering on the grease pencil layer and not on the set layer? Well, that's because freestyle, the freestyle layer over here, is also keying off the same uh, collections as the set um, one. And it would have outlined those text objects. So you're getting a really thick a uh, horrible outline around them and it doesn't look that great. And so just to be economical, I put uh, those text files into that grease pencil collection. So they will only render on that pass there. Now you can do a bunch of other things because we've got an emission uh, layer here. You can put a glow on that or even on the, the background if you wished. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, that is how I would uh, create a uh, comic panel entirely inside Blender and the com comparison between the Clip Studio Pro version and the Blender version are, uh, you know, uh, you can see the differences, you can see advantages, disadvantages, and you can obviously add things to it. And if you know are a Patreon supporter and uh, you or, or you've bought the, the manga shader, you can certainly use those uh, materials to further enhance this, um, uh, th this panel. Um, but uh, there you have it. So I hope you got a lot out of that. I'm sorry this was such a lengthy tutorial, but it did cover a lot of ground. This finished file with all of the assets minus the uh, font are available through the link uh, in, in the notes below this video. If you're watching it on YouTube or if you're watching this on Patreon, they're right there in the notes below. So thanks guys uh, for watching and I'll be back again next month. Bye for now.